Okay, today we're looking at sugar futures, the October contract. SBGAN-V stands for, V stands for October, GAN. That means we're using the GAN style continuation series where we connect the current October contract to the expired October contracts. So that's just one little nuance. I just want to let you know to begin with, if the data looks slightly different, that's the reason. From this high to this low, is the initial swing we create this box what we call the GAN square using a scale with the one by one equal to 0 0.05 points so for every day you move up you move uh, excuse me every day you move over you move up 0 0.5 points that's the scale and then of course this would be half half the scale this is a one by two meaning you're only moving up 0 0.25 points and this one is twice the scale so um, you're moving up 0.1 instead of 0 0.5 and if you ever wonder I don't know if you if you do want to look at the software basically price unit is 0 0.5 that's that's where you enter the scale so that's what it is right there now what I'd like to show you is the divisions one quarter one half three quarters full completion of the square okay one eighth two eighths three eighths four eighths which is the fifty percent mark five eighths six eighths seven eighths eight you divide the square vertically into eight parts or eight segments uh, that's the way Gan did it he always divided price by eight segments and time you could divide it by eight if you want I've chosen to divide it by four uh, one force and you can see why the high here for sugar is came one fourth of the way through the square in time the low came just slightly off but it basically it was slightly before this 50% retracement in time or halfway through the square in time three quarters of the way through the square is right about now August 24th um, it looks like we're about to go up again I think this is a low because this was a low this is a high I think my theory is that we'll probably go up into October the full completion of the square in time now could I be wrong yes if this thing the two by one line gives way if we take this out we may go down to 1226 retest that 50% retracement uh, we might even go lower so you have to keep an open mind. The nice thing about GAN is it gives you a way to check your progress. You can say, well, I have this theory and I'm going to check it against reality. And if you're a fundamentalist, you can go with somebody's opinion on CNBC and then stick with it, dig your shoes in and say, oh, I'm going to stay with my trade. No, that's not what you do. What you want to do is trade based on the chart. And there's no better way to gauge your progress than to know the price action and if it's taking out this two by one line you know something's wrong if it takes out the 50 percent retracement it's definitely in trouble but as long as these two hold then maybe you'll bounce back and go higher into uh, the completion of the square i'd like to see it get back to 15 dollars by october retesting the uh, february high that would be nice but you know market will do whatever it wants to do so I'm just showing you uh, the GAN square and I should preface this this is the square according to price so square the range by price is one way of doing it uh, as you see the one by one we set it to 0 0.5 points per trading day and the range as we saw down here was this this complete range of this swing was 5.48 and you take that multiply by 20 because um, 1 divided by 0 0.05 is 20 so that gives you this total figure here 5.48 times 20 equals 109.6 days and that's how we decide how far to carry this thing across so there is some math involved here but it's not all that difficult um, I just wanted to show you the math so you can understand how we get the completion of the square 
Another simple way to understand it is that when this one by one crosses the level of the high, that is the completion of the square. That's the way Gan did it. You know, he didn't draw these squares on his charts. He just looked for the line, the one by one, when it crossed the level of the uh, high, he knew he had completed the square. But since we have computers, why not use them? Um, it draws a nice square. You can visualize what's going on. And I really like the fact that um, right here we can see uh, a low, or at least what I think will be a low. So, you know, this is going to be helpful if we get above 1294, 3 eighths retracement. If we get above 1364, this would all be very nice. Um, I would like to see that happen, and that would confirm my view that, hey, we're headed toward $15. Now there is another way of doing it. You don't have to square the range by price. You can do it by time. You could take a one by one and the range, as you see here, is 52 bars or 52 trading days. So 52 trading days times the scale that we chose, 0 0.5 equals 2.6. So what that gives us is 2.6 points is the vertical distance of the square. And the time distance, as you know, is 52 trading days. So all we're doing is taking the distance from here to here, 52 trading days, moving it over to here. That completes the square in time. So now you know how to do square the range by time and by price. Um, let's see what this shows us. You can see you had a low here. You had sort of a high here. It did get a little bit above it, but momentum high here. And this one looks like a lower high, sold off, found support on a one quarter division of the square. And this one kind of slipped below it, but the completion of the square pretty much gave us a low. And you can see the division is offering support. You took off again one quarter of the way through the second square in time. And it looks like we had a high August 18th, halfway through the second square in time. And notice how this two by one line here appears to be giving us support. I like that. So maybe we bounce back. We get above this former high and 1342. Maybe we go to 1472. Um, that's the idea. If you take this out, maybe you go back here. So I'm not telling you direction. I'm not telling you whether it's going to go up or down. I'm telling you something far more useful. I'm telling you how you use the square to gauge whether or not you're making progress on your trade. Whether you're short or long is irrelevant. What's, what matters here is what is the market actually doing in relationship to the square? That's what we're interested in. Um, now, if you find this sort of thing interesting, note that the GAN squares, we apply them to all markets. Um, it's not something that just works on sugar. You know, Gann got his start in commodities, but he traded stocks, bonds, forex, commodities. Um, and if he were alive today, I'm sure he'd be trading Bitcoin. Um, but the point here is that these concepts prove that there's a relationship between time and price. If you don't believe that, then you're just not acknowledging reality. Uh, going back to the square of the range by price, I really think this is very useful. Uh, knowing that there's a relationship between time and price and choosing the right scale, you can figure out where this market's headed next. But as long as you adjust your view, you know, obviously we might think it's going to go up, but if it takes this out, hey, we change our view. So you know where your stop loss is. You know when to get out. You know when to change your view. And you know when to double down. You know, if you close above 1364, maybe you think, oh, okay, I was right. I'll add to my position. It's going to go to 15. So keep in mind, none of this stuff works every time. Nothing's perfect, but there is a methodology here. This is what separates GAN from a lot of other disciplines. It Basically, the methodology is very clear. You just have to be rigorous in applying it. And so you want, you want to look at different techniques. There's the GAN square the range by price, GAN square the range by time. You, you, you look at both, you get insights, and GAN has a whole load of other tools, as you probably know. 
square of nine, you've got two times the high, two times the low. You got all kinds of tools, anniversary dates, seasonal change dates, um, astro, you got a whole range of tools to work with. You don't have to use all of them, but if you use some of them uh, with whatever you're doing now, maybe you're using momentum indicators, it will help your trading. You don't have to use everything, but this is a very, I think this is a very useful tool, and I think you'd be happy to, uh, to add it to your toolbox. And so good luck with your trading. If you have any further questions, send me an email at jamesmith at gananalysis.net or go to my website, www.ganalysis.net. Thanks for your time.